Mayor, do you have any uh, uh, opinion on the um, uh, bill uh, passed by the committee yesterday about the council hiring its own lawyer? Um, Mr. Nelson said that he believed it was duplicative and perhaps a waste of money, but that he would help the council in, in drafting it. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Um, the same. You know, I, I don't. While I understand their need, I think that um, you know we certainly work hard to make sure that they have counsel that is um, respectful of their independence. Um, they certainly uh, feel that they want something uh, a little bit more independent, and I'm not going to stand in the way of that. So will you sign it? Yeah, I, I'm not going to. I won't stand in the way of, of their um, their interest to have independent counsel. When you were council president, did you ever have these concerns? Yes. And I went to the, I think it was two administrations ago, I believe, with the same, with the same concern. Um, you know, but in the past, what we did was work um, more closely with the law department to make sure that we were getting the council that we uh, believed that we needed. This morning, um, the board agreed with a, a protest from the low bidder. Mm -hmm. and. Um, decided that a, a clerical error wasn't enough to disqualify a contract. Can you explain your thought process there? I think the uh, protestant had a, a, a decent point, and um, my counsel agreed, and uh, you know we made the motion. I don't think it's not much more than that. What about teasers? What are your thoughts on the use of them? Um, I think it's, it is an important tool for the police department to have uh, that a, a non, a, I guess in a more than 90% of the time it is uh, non-fatal and it gives officers an opportunity to gain control uh, of uh, a situation or a disorderly or violent or aggressive um, suspect uh, in a way that will reduce the likelihood of loss of life. Mayor, as of today, mm -hmm. the speed cameras in the city have been offline for six months, mm -hmm. a little more than six months, with no You're welcome. dates certain. <laughs> <laughs> dates certain. Um, first of all, let, let me just ask you a question mm -hmm. about, it, you know, this is a, a serious chunk of revenue, mm -hmm. significant chunk of revenue. So how is the city, first of all, making that, up that, that revenue? When we knew that there were uh, issues with the speed cameras and, and knowing uh, that it was a commitment to make sure that when they went back online that we, uh, that, that we got it right, uh, at that point we knew that we had to start you know, tightening our belts in uh, expectation that that revenue might not be on the table. So just like we've gotten through deficits before and at, or, or revenue shortages before, we'll do, employ the same, uh, the same methods. You know, we look for ways to uh, cut costs, look for ways that uh, we can become uh, more efficient and absorb that loss. And the, I want to ask you a broader question mm -hmm. um, because you're a mayor. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the debacle in Washington with the federal website, the state yesterday told its contractor to um, hire more people. The speed cameras in the city, Baltimore County just canceled citations for about uh, more than a thousand people. Why is it seeing that government can't quite get this right in terms of operating these systems that involve technology? I think um, what you're pointing out is uh, a few incidents of uh, ineffective uh, technology and government, um, but while you're, you're spotlighting the few, more times than not, uh, government is proficient um, in using technology to address the needs of uh, constituents. We've, we've done it time and time again uh, with the permitting system, uh, with, the, with uh, 311. I mean, I could go on and on about the different ways that we've used technology to improve efficiency. Um, in everything that we do as humans, there will be errors. Sometimes those errors will be small. Sometimes those errors will be large. Uh, it does not, you know, we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater because of a few um, examples of uh, errors in the use of technology. We've shown that using technology to enhance efficiency is what our customers want. 
uh, and we're going to continue to work to get it right. There are enough examples of us uh, getting it right that gives me, um, that, that keeps me optimistic that, uh, that we're going to be able to, with respect to the city, get the speed cameras uh, up and running and, and done uh, correctly, and any other thing that we think that we can use technology to improve the, qu the quality and efficiency of service that we're able to render to the public. You know, again, we're going to make mistakes, and we don't know what they're going to be in, in the future. Uh, but any time that you have, you know, any time that you try to, to make major system changes and use technology to do it, there will be errors. It doesn't matter if it's a government or a, a private company. It, you're going to have errors. Uh, but my commitment as mayor of the city of Baltimore is to make sure that we re uh, do everything we can to reduce the errors when we find an error to, to fix it. Why do you think the speed cameras, I mean, what is the problem now with the speed cameras? It's taken six months and it still hasn't come, and it's apparently resolved. We want to make sure that uh, when they go back online, they go back online with, uh, with accuracy mm -hmm. and efficiency and consistency, and that has yet to be... Um, These are, so they're doing tests, tests yes. now, testing the system? And, and, and uh, the current vendor is not there yet. In terms of a system that works? On a consistent basis, yes. And there's there's fifteen million dollars budgeted for the speed cameras in this budget, and uh, you said there's belt tightening going on. But what areas of the budget are you pulling from that make up that? Not there are no specific. There's there are no programs that are going to be cut because of this uh, the speed camera. We're looking for general overall efficiencies, which we've shown in the past that we've been able to do everything from looking at uh, unfilled vacancies to you know as I said, just general belt tightening. We've closed. As you, I mean, in your time, every single one of you around the table, we've closed uh, gaps much in that were much more significant than this. So I don't have any doubt uh, that we're going to be able to um, you know, make up that revenue. As a mayor, that what has happened with um, healthcare.gov and the um, debacle of it, which is, I think, what you know, both parties are now kind of calling it that. I mean, but, as you said, as a mayor of a significant sized city, um, are you concerned about the loss of confidence in government? There's, there are always going to be um, individuals that point to the to the mistakes and use that as a reason not to have confidence. Uh, when you know, if you look at the the broad uh, swath of what uh, government does, uh, we're providing services that our constituents. Um, need. Um, you know, that being said, when there's, when you have a mistake of that magnitude on something that's so significant, it does um, it does shake the confidence of the public in uh, our effectiveness and efficiency and our, our ability to you know deliver what we say that we're going to um, deliver. Um, you know, I think that the Obama administration understands how serious this is and that we're, they're working very hard. Uh, to fix it, I don't think there's anybody that that would say that this isn't a big uh, a big mistake. Um, but underlying, you know, the the ongoing soap opera drama of um, you know the the health the Obamacare rollout, it are, are millions of Americans that are in need of health insurance and uh, a better way to um, deliver and provide um, for coverage. And my hope is that we don't lose sight of that. Going back to speed cameras for a second, any kind of timetable you're looking for and when the public should expect that? Not yet. Really? Okay. Can you speak on the concerns that some ratepayers have that with the introduction of the smart meters that their bills are going to go up even more so because of the technology? What do you mean? That the meters are going to be inaccurate? No. Well, I mean, Mark recently did an article that, you know, just um, with the cost of the actual meter, and how they monitor use that the customer's bill will go up. So I'm not, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I respect you, but I, I didn't read it, so I don't know what you're talking about. So can you say whether you think, with the knowledge you have on smart meters? I think smart meters are more efficient. I think they're more accurate, and they will allow us to provide more accurate uh, and more timely meter readings. Uh, we know, as I mentioned uh, here before, that the the concern about accurate uh, bills and incorrect water bills, uh, they start, the problem starts, uh, basically starts and ends at the meter. And when we uh, have more 
effective uh, meters that are able to deliver a uh, accurate reading uh, will be able to provide, um, you know, from from the start of the service, you know, to the bill, uh, an accurate reading for um, you know, for every citizen. So that's the goal to make sure that we're able to provide accurate readings, uh, that we reduce the number of estimated reads, and that we have a system from the beginning to end. Um, that does what we intend it to do. And I, and I know that the technology that smart readers provide, um, you know, across the country, um, you know, will increase, increase that efficiency and accuracy. Will there still be a need for meter readers then? Um, it depends. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if the technology will advance in the future to where we don't need meter readers. But, um, yeah, I think right, as it stands now, the answer is yes, there will still be a need. Are you telling people that if they like the water bill they have now, they can keep it? Uh-huh, right. <laughs> what, what, uh, what's referred to is that the bidders, particularly the Dynas bid, advertises to the city that they'll be giving you, they guarantee in effect, 10% more revenues because their meters, the census meters, will be able to record incredibly accurately low flow, uh, literally drips of water, which the current meters don't. Do and therefore they have a whole chart saying how they'll raise six million in revenues per year for the next twenty years, and, and that's also part of their advertising. So that bills will go up according to that. That's one of their their selling points. Thank you for that information. Okay, well that's what you, okay so bills will go up. You you've read a lot more of the the uh, RFP and the response than I have. I have uh, as I mentioned when we talked about this before, uh, my involvement in this contract and others, uh, you know, is not at that level. And it will once um, it's prepared to come to me, I'll get briefed and I'll have more information. But I, I cannot uh, confirm nor deny um, what sure. you're saying about that. Has has that material come to you yet? Not yet. Okay. It's on its way. We do one more guy. As far as the technology, when BGE rolled out their smart meters, some people really have a lot of health concerns regarding the technology. Um, have you prepared um, yourself and your administration to address those issues? Um, yes. How so again, that I can uh, direct you to Rudy Chow in the Water Department that can talk more specifically about it. But we are we are aware of the. Uh, concerns raised about health. Can you be any more specific as to how you plan to address I those I can specifically concerns? tell you that I can direct you to Rudy Chow. Anything else? All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Care.